Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So today is actually just going to be a quick talk about about the latest interview that we had about patch 5.3. I have the link down in the description below if you want to read it yourself. And I'm just really going to scan over most of it here. And they did talk a great deal about 5.3. So this article is called Final Fantasy XIV, The Future of Its Story, Butts, and Most Lovable Character. And you'll understand why the butts is in there in just a moment. I just thought it was funny when I saw that. So, patch 5.3 is going to be the big cap off to the Shadowbringers arc. This we already know. So this is an interview that was talked about with uh, Yoshida about the evolving story and about some of the more glamorous aspects of Final Fantasy XIV. And especially with Graha Tia. And I will get to him all in just a moment. So this first part here does mention a bit about the expansion updates as well as what you can be expecting. And Yoshi P says that there's going to be a lot of surprises, maybe some sad parts, but also a lot of joy when he summed up how 5.3 is going to be playing out. So in the talk, they did tease a little bit more of what's going to be coming, including the AI companion, the trust system, and the developments of supporting characters like the Exarch. So here they were kind enough to put in the trailer, which is an amazing trailer. If you haven't seen it yet, I strongly recommend that you do. And if you want to see my personal live reaction when I saw it, it's down in the description below as well. Needless to say, I freaked out. Now, some of the questions that they asked were actually pretty good ones, and they answered a lot of questions that I've personally been wondering about. One of them is, we know that Reflections and Crystal is the 5.3 update and it's concluding the Shadowbringer arc. Can you speak more broadly about how you're transitioning from Shadowbringers and leaving players in for what's for the next story? So, as we are all aware of by now, there are three expansions from Final Fantasy XIV, and that includes Heavensward, Stormblood, and Shadowbringers. So as with the previous expansions with the point three patches, they are concluding that story arc, but then the remaining patches are going to be setting everything up for the next story. So of course, this is going to be a very big one, and it's going to be very, I guess, kind of complicated because it is an entirely different world. So it is a departure, or maybe it's really a goodbye that they're going to be saying to that story, and... They do feel that they have a sense of conclusion for everything that's going to be happening. And they did mention before that about 99% of all of our unanswered questions are going to be answered. In Shadowbringers, one of the major themes that they had was kind of reintroducing the members of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn to our hero. So you kind of get a feeling that your characters are actually allies this time, and they're not just sort of kind of like your commanders, like they're commanding you like on this great giant chessboard. And I think that for a lot of people that's kind of how they felt. Because they're basically in a place of relative safety while the warrior of light, or in this case the warrior of darkness, is kind of off risking their lives. This time though, they're actually fighting properly with the warrior of darkness and I really do love how they did that. So they actually put in a lot of effort just paying little extra attention to detail like how each of the Scions think, like how they face certain problems. And now that they're departing from the first, each one of the members of the Scions kind of have to say their own goodbye to it. And they are going to be depicting those moments very thoroughly as well. So as of right now, if you play through up to this point in the story of 5.2 and continue to do so with the Eden questline, uh, it did say that Orianje, Thancred, and Alphino are pretty much ready to go home. Like, they kind of took care of, like, all their unfinished business, I should say. We haven't gotten anything like that from Yastola or Alize just yet, but I'm sure that we will be getting that soon. And this next patch is supposed to be pretty long, like, at least compared to all the other patches. So they are expecting us to kind of take our time through it, experience the conclusion, see how everyone says their goodbye as we get ready to transition into the next storyline. So we don't know anything about the next storyline. I mean, it's been talked about that we're going to go to Gollumall, and that's pretty much, I think, the most obvious solution. But I'm sure that we will be finding out soon. That's still a long ways off. Okay, so 
as we can see here, that's the same question. Are we going to be going to Gollumall soon? We've seen a little bit of it in story with Istinian and Gaius, but are we going to start seeing more and actually go there someday? So according to Yoshi P, it doesn't seem like we will be going to Gollumall yet. He claims that in that aspect, they're going to be going against the player's expectations, but in a good way. And they have content that's already going to be talking a lot about Gollumall anyway, such as the Sorrows of Wyatt, uh, the Save the Queen, the Bojan Southern Front, and that's really going to be touching upon the Garlean Empire. So again, people are starting to wonder that with Shadowbringers over, where are we going to go to next? Again, I think it might be a little bit too early to be wondering about that since we still don't have a proper ending for Shadowbringers, but I have a feeling that after 5.3 comes out, people are really going to be starting to wonder. Now, the next question has to do with the end of Shadowbringers when the Crystal Exarch calls in heroes from the other realm, and their impressions is that this is going to have major implications for where the story is going to go, and they're wondering if they can speak or whether or not they're going to actually go into kind of an explanation about that or playing on that theme anytime soon or what kind of implications that has for the next expansion. Uh, well with that scene in mind they did say that there are seven other heroes that were called in to basically support the player and that was actually a theme that has existed since A Realm Reborn. People are asking, who are these seven heroes behind me? Well, the development team is thinking, well, maybe we should come up with an answer. And so they made it so that players can still use their imagination on theories about who and what these heroes are. And that they still want players to kind of speculate, first of all. And there's another aspect of players kind of wondering who the Warrior of Light is and who their identity is because that's not completely clear just yet and given everything that's happening it does seem like the dev team might be shedding a little bit more light of who the warrior of light is or maybe who they used to be and before that was kind of well this is your character you decide what their story is basically and i think everyone has done that everyone kind of has like their own backstory for their warrior of light but it does seem that they might be digging a little bit deeper into the true nature of the Warrior of Light. I'm really, really looking forward to that. Now the next question they talked about was that you told people to play the Crystal Tower Raid series in the new patch it's going to be required. Are there any other pieces of content that you can point to that players should play in anticipation for what's coming up like what you did with the Crystal Tower and Shadowbringers? Well, having the Crystal Tower as part of a required content for Shadowbringers is something that the team was kind of torn up about because basically in this story, you're kind of free to do whatever you want. You can go back and play like whatever content that you want whenever you want. And you don't necessarily need to do the Crystal Tower quest line when you're playing through Shadowbringers, at least up to before 5.3. But with everything that's going on, and since the Crystal Tower questline is such an important core element, and like, especially with the emotional aspect of the story, and the fact that it's no longer really a difficult dungeon to get through, they felt that it was okay to kind of have it tied into the main scenario. And you can't really blame them. I mean, it doesn't take too long to really get through there anymore. I mean, when it first came out, it did take a long time to kind of get through it. As for references to any other quests that they recommend that people do, they did specifically suggest that you do the Omega Raids and maybe then the Alexander Raid series, and you might see these different connections between different elements as you play throughout the story. And a very interesting bit of information, apparently Yoshi Peas did state that it might be a good idea to get a refresher on Heaven's Ward. Now, I love Heaven's Ward, I really do. I'm not entirely sure why like any future content would have anything specifically to do with Heaven's Ward anymore. So I'm not 100% sure I understand what he means by that. And I was recently thinking like maybe he was talking about Maricidia because we do hear about Maricidia like every once in a while throughout Heaven's Ward. In fact, that was kind of a big thing like near the very end of the story where we meet Tiamat and we learn a little bit more about Maricidia and everything. So it could be that that's maybe a hint of where we're going to in the future. I mean, we might be going to Maricidia. If we do, I will love that. 
But here's like the biggest part for me because it talks about the Exarch. Since they've had some time with the Crystal Exarch, he's become many players' favorite character, myself included, and they want to know just what it was like to create the Crystal Exarch and what made them think to make him such an endearing, lovely character, which he is. Like, I just love him. He's amazing. So they said that when they initially created the Crystal Tower content as the Alliance Raid way back then, they never imagined that they would see Grahatia again. Like he was never somebody that they gave too much thought to and they kind of just sealed off like his character like inside the Crystal Tower and they, I guess they just kind of forgot about him, which is terrible, but... They did state that they were wondering on and off of whether they could reuse this character, but that nothing was really set in stone. Basically, when they were creating Grahatia, they made him so that he's this young man who's so enamored by the thought of adventure and having such reverence for the Warrior of Light that they just had to bring him back because he's always wanted to be a hero himself. He's always wanted to go on an adventure just like in the stories he read when he was young. And really, it was that kind of trait that they created for him that just really made him stand out from anyone else. And apparently after he went and sealed himself off inside the Crystal Tower, he became much more popular. So they were thinking about when they were creating the whole Shadowbringer storyline, they decided that they could use this content. And of course, as we all know for sure, his adventure has not concluded just yet. Uh, we don't know where the Crystal Exarch is going to go from here, but they think that's going to be a really big discovery for us. And yeah, so they actually said, you got me worried now. That's my boy. Please don't hurt my boy. And I understand that. I love this guy. I would be heartbroken if something happened to him. And they say that that's why he's such an amazing character. Because it's not about romantic feelings, love, or even just crushing on the Warrior of Light. It's just, it's very simple and pure. He wants to go on an amazing adventure alongside the Warrior of Light. He just has like this almost childlike reverence for this person. And that's really the reason I think that a lot of people just love this guy because he's amazing. They even said that uh, when they were bringing Grahatia back, the team just wanted to tell him good morning or it's great seeing you after waking him up. Because this story, like the Shadowbringer story, isn't just about the Warrior of Darkness, it's the Crystal Exarch's story too. And much of Shadowbringers does revolve around the Crystal Exarch, and he plays such a major role, they feel like it's time that we kind of give him a good conclusion to the story, like maybe give him some kind of a, of a reward, and I don't know what they mean by that, but I'm kind of worried about it. And that's kind of what they said about the Exarch, so moving on to the trust system, and that has really helped with a lot of players apparently, because now they have like this entire expansion, they have a set of incorporating the trust system, and they were wondering about how they felt after implying it. They want to know like if everything is going like as they planned, or if they have things they want to tweak about it. And I guess that right now, uh, they love the concept of the trust system, and people and the people creating these love the story as well, so they really enjoy working on it. And I kind of agree with that. I mean, moving with the trust system is a little bit slower, I suppose, than normally with a dungeon where you have like a group of people where you could just run on through it. I recommend you try to run through at least unlocking the dungeon with the trust system, and I think that's just a great thing to do. And they've even talked about to a point, well, maybe they can look up into some of the previous dungeons, like in A Realm Reborn, and you can actually take your non-player characters in there. So this next question is actually about the glamour system. Also, considering the controversy around the 2B outfit and the size of players' butts, is there going to be like a butt size slider? First of all, I really don't think that's a big problem. I don't think too many people are complaining about that. Especially with some of the more pervy players. I'm not speaking for them, I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, the biggest thing I have to agree with what Yoshi P said is that their butts look really good in that outfit. <laughs> so they might make some changes, some tweaks with that later on in the future, but again, I don't see that as too big of a problem. But if they were to add a slider to where all the players would have the option to enlarge their behinds. 
uh, they would have to look at all of their equipment, which there are thousands by now in the game. So I really don't think that that's something that is necessarily needed, but hey, I mean, so while I think that it's something that they could really do if they really wanted to, it's really not that practical. It's not feasible. Okay, so there's one last question, and this actually is in reference to both the ninja and the monk. Apparently, they use a lot of leg power in their attack rotation, so it only makes sense they have strong glutes. <laughs> yeah, so that's another point they wanted to make. If you do add the butt size to be larger, it will naturally affect the way the character walks. So... For a butt slider, let's bring in more people and play more. <laughs> and before we decide that idea. It, hey, whatever works for you, whatever you're into, I'm not judging. Anyway, everyone, that is the interview so far and a little bit more information of what we can be expecting for 5.3. So we have a lot of good stuff here, a lot of interesting little tidbits and information we can look forward to. And I know I can't wait. It's about, I would say, two and a half weeks left before patch 5.3 comes out. And I just can't wait. It's going to be fantastic. I hope everyone's going to be looking forward to it too. And so until next time everyone, this is Fantasy Girl signing out.